Hey guys, welcome back to the workbench. This is Dan here, as always, and in this video, I'm going to be showcasing some of the brand new locomotives that I've uh, recently completed. Uh, one of these you guys may already remember because I showed this in prior videos, uh, so there'll be no, you know, uh, real surprises there. You'll just see the finished product. Uh, but the second unit will be a surprise unless you've been following my uh, Facebook, uh, uh, my recent Facebook posts. Uh, but I'm very proud of these two models and how they turned out. But uh, I wanted to make obviously a separate video away from my rolling stock for these in particular so I can kind of go in a little more detail with them but still uh, kind of trying to do this in a relatively timely manner that way I'm not eating up too much time we have another uh, you know 40 minutes of footage so we'll go ahead and uh, get started here guys uh, like I said this first locomotive here is one that I did and uh, I like to buy these up whenever I can and this is one I've actually seen in real life so I'll go ahead and roll her into the shot here and here she is. Uh, we have the finished product for Ferex 3022. This is uh, one of the popular early 2000s uh, GCFX rebuilds that were used on CSX mostly. And uh, these units uh, uh, put on a lot of miles for CSX. And uh, Ferex 3022 is actually one of the lucky ones uh, to recently be have been pulled out of storage and put back into service, uh, back into lease with CSX currently. And that's where it is currently as we even right now. Uh, with uh, I think 3029, 3044, 3029, and uh, 3041 are the other units that are still running right now. So uh, with this particular unit, it was quite the build. Um, the Ferex units are I'm not I'm not saying that they're the hardest to build, but they they have a lot of unique details to them that all have to be made uh, kind of from scratch. So that's really the the trick to these and to making them look right. So there's like a lot of a lot of uh, specific detailing I had to do to these uh, to make it uh, or to make it look accurate to the prototype. Obviously, I had to renumber it and do all that, but I'll go ahead and uh, point that out as we go here. Uh, so to start, the first thing I had to do when I got this uh, Atherton locomotive was I had to go in there and kind of clean out the motor a little bit because this thing was brand new out of the box. And the problem with these early uh, early runs of the Atherton SD40s is that the uh, the gear setting in them for some reason is really set low so they are very jerky right out of the box so unless this has DCC you can't really do anything about it on DC it runs very slowly so it does not make a very good companion with any other uh, more modern RTR locomotives because it will usually lag along uh, so I gotta still install DCC to this that's the only thing uh, but to start what I had to do with it was obviously I cleaned out the motor a little bit and then uh, I just started basically with the detailing process of adding all the needed detailing and all that and then what I had to do was obviously the original number would have been Ferex 3031 so I stripped off the original number and re-decaled it with microscale decals uh, to do the new numbers and all that but as you can see uh, that turned out pretty good the other extremely big change that I had to do to this and that's something that's kind of uh, if you want these to be and to look realistic that you had to do is the modified uh, radiator grills on these because the problem with the early rail power shells uh, when Atherton got the rail power inherited or bought rail power they used the SD40 shells from rail power uh, to do these engines and what you saw with these early rail power shells was these unrealistic large radiator grills these uh, on the model it made them look very toyish and to make these look prototypical uh, what I had to do is I had to uh, file down the very top portion of this and then fill it in with styrene and then clean it up, clean up the edges and all that with putty, some sanding, and I had to uh, paint match the silver uh, to the Atherin silver, or to the silver that Atherin put on the model to do that. So, in the, the end result, it looks pretty good and it looks a lot better. It's not the best representation of an early SD40 grill, but it does look okay. It, 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 uh, it makes a good stand in at least, and it, it definitely looks a lot better than having that big clunky looking toyish grill. So, that was another big change I had to do to it. Obviously, I had to do all the fuel tank detailing. So, I did like uh, all the front end details. I got the waste retention tank on there, as you can see. That's a very important detail you have to have on all these uh, modern locomotives. Uh, as you can see, once I did all the detailing, then I went over and weathered it. And so, my basic weathering technique, obviously, is to use the acrylics uh, to start with. So, I did the grime coat on the, on the acrylic, uh, with the acrylic anyway, excuse me. So, I grimed up the trucks, grimed up the fuel tank, and then uh, pretty much, like, you know, 
all over the engine and once I did all the truck weathering with all the acrylics I then followed behind with my chalk pestles hit them up in certain areas where needed and then I did all the uh, other little like rust effects uh, the kind of the dusty looking uh, effects with all the uh, powders aim powders to do that so I used like some rust colors as you can see for the earth tones uh, you got like these bright rust streaks are aim powder and then like I said the dusting on the truck is all aim powder as well so it all came out pretty good also you can see that the locomotive has all the reflective safety striping on it which is my reflective tape which is pretty nice so I'll go ahead and take the camera off the tripod here and we'll get in close to this guy so you can see it up close alright so here we have it up close here as you can see we got all the nice front end details added so you got the uh, custom made Canadian style coupler lift bars, the Canadian style uh, uh, plow mounted ditch lights, you got the MU jumper, the modified snow plow, uh, the new knuckle couplers are installed, you got the MU cables, uh, the airlines are added, the MU receptacles as well. Obviously, another big task with these uh, Ferrix units is that the nose light or the classification lights are removed on these modern units, so I had to sand those away, uh, fill them up with putty, and then redo the chevrons and touch up the green paint on the nose here. So that was the other big thing. Uh, nothing too crazy with the nose other than the fact that these Ferrix units, uh, a standard EMD unit has the grab irons to climb up onto the nose on this side. Ferrix, when they rebuilt these SC40s, put them on the conductor side. Really, I guess, probably uh, in reality, they meant for everything to be on this side since obviously this is the, con this is the conductor side cab door. So they probably meant for that all to be on kind of a universal, like, they wanted this to, they wanted everything to be on this side, and not necessarily on this side, I guess, is why they did that. But uh, that was obviously another detail I had to do, and I'll show you guys that on the, when we get to that side in a minute. But as you can see, I had to do all the uh, top details. So you got the uh, antenna there for the new radio equipment. You got the EOT antenna, the old radio antenna, uh, the airline running from the cab all the way back to the K3 horn, which is a uh, details west part. And then, uh, other than that, like, pretty much on the top in terms of weathering, standard grime, rust, I did all that with the photos, and I got the exhausted on the top there too, darkened the grills and all that, so that all came out pretty good. And then as we get to the ends here, or the opposite end, pretty much about the same, uh, and then on this end you can see you got all the details again, so those all look really, really nice. And then as we move to this side, or in focus here. I can kind of compare this to actual prototype photos now. We'll go ahead and show you guys the model here real quick. And then as you look at the prototype unit, this is the real Ferrix 3022. So obviously what I had to do to this, obviously like I, I did all the detailing obviously based on the photos and all that. Uh, so like <clears throat> you can see like the safety stripe on the sill obviously for one thing it was one one big thing I had to do all the detailing is based off these photos obviously and then here's what I'm talking about in terms of the grab iron replacement see how they put the grab irons on this side and not the usual side on this which would be normally on the engineer side of the engine they put them on this side the conductor side next to the door which I think is really interesting so obviously I had to do that and you can see a kind of the grime weathering on this and that's what I replicated on my model of 3022 so there's the prototype and then back to the model here pretty much the same thing so obviously like I said all the prototypical detailing was added where needed there's a nice shot of the trucks nice and grimy on those all looks pretty good but yeah again those are the grab irons I had to modify so it looks pretty good but uh, overall it came out pretty good. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Like I said, the only thing it needs at this point is the DCC installation, uh, which I'll get around to here. Okay, so this next unit, like I said, is an HLCX Renorec, and I'm very happy again with how this one turned out because I did a lot of, did a lot of extra detailing to it. Uh, so we'll go ahead and bring her into the shot here so you guys can check this out. Okay, so here we have HLCX 9009, and with this unit, uh, what this used to be, it was a former SP unit, and it's one of the uh, well-known uh, former Morris Knudsen rebuilds. 
this is an SD40M-2, a former SD45 car body unit now. And uh, what happened with this one was uh, obviously HLCX acquired the uh, Morris Knudsen SD45 rebuilds or the MPI SD45s and the SD40s, uh, if you recall. And so this one in particular got patched for HLCX, but it retained its original number of 9009, again like uh, most of these did. And unfortunately with this particular unit, it was later sold off to, uh, I believe, Wamax, and then it was scrapped uh, shortly after. But in my, in my railroad, I'm saying that it's still alive, obviously because I like the unit enough. Uh, so and, in, and again, in my fleet, I'm saying it's in long-term lease with Union Pacific uh, for my road. So like it's, it's kind of nice having be able to kind of having your own road uh, kind of be able to call the shots on how some of these locomotives got around so that's it's pretty nice but anyways uh, with this particular unit I had to do a lot of additional detailing to it and another big detail and another kind of step in getting my feet wet into another modeling technique was doing actually uh, uh, exposed bearing caps on the trucks which I'll show you guys in a minute so it was a whole it opened up a whole level other level of realism in this particular locomotive I'm very happy with how it turned out uh, so we'll go ahead and get in close with this one so I can show you guys all the uh, details and compare it to the prototype. Okay, so with this particular unit, this is one of the newer Atherin RTR releases of the MPI SD45s. So when they made this road number, I was very excited. I actually got this one on eBay for a very good price. I got this for like 50 bucks, which is pretty awesome, uh, considering these are retail of about $105. Uh, so that's pretty sweet. Uh, but there was a lot of, lot of work I had to do to this to make it an actual accurate uh, representation of the real 9009 as it looked with HLCX so like there's a lot of things I had to do like the trucks I modified the cab a little bit which you'll see also in a minute and uh, obviously did all the prototypical detailing uh, so there's a lot to be said here but like uh, the big thing uh, to start was the trucks as you can see they're not the standard kind of uh, EMD truck where uh, if I can actually bring in 3x3022 again real quick Here's what normally uh, one of these early SD40 trucks looks like. And as you can see, you have the journal covers. But with HLCX 9009, it has the exposed bearing caps. Like most, a lot of these leased units that uh, worked on CSX ended up getting these, uh, ended up having uh, exposed bearing caps after they were done with CSX because CSX like to modify these uh, for some particular reason. That's how they like to run their engines. As with the exposed bearing caps. So what I had to do with these uh, to do this effect was I first purchased uh, some Details West uh, bearing caps, and what I did was I took the trucks all out, or the truck side frames all off the engines, or all off the the side or the the trucks. I'm excuse excuse me. And then what I had to do was I drilled through and removed all of the old uh, journal caps, and then I sanded them out you know to make them nice and clean and then I inserted the bearing caps inside glued them in place and then uh, uh, touched up the paint and then obviously proceeded with the weathering uh, the detailing uh, was actually relatively easy to say the least uh, but it does look really good it looks like it's uh, more complicated than it actually is in reality uh, but it was definitely an interesting uh, experiment with this and I'm very happy with how they turned out uh, you know they're, they're not exactly perfect there's a few like little gaps like here and there uh, where the drilling uh, kinda got a little sloppy but you know other than that they're okay and they look good uh, it's definitely a technique I want to perfect in the future but uh, we better move on so we don't eat up too much time here but basically what I had to do as we look at the front of the unit I had to detail it up to obviously all the photos. So starting with the cab on the cab roof, I had to add the new antennas. You got the dual fire firecrackers across from each other. You got this little box cab or this little uh, I think GPS box here on the roof that I had to add. And then you got the new radio antenna right there next to the uh, K3 air horn, which is mounted up on the stand. That's a custom part. And as you can see, this particular unit has an open cab door, which is a really cool feature. Uh, and why I chose to do it on this particular unit is in so many photos of that I found of the HLCX 9009. For example, this one, you'll notice the cab door in a lot of these shots is open, or the, the uh, conductor side cab door is usually open which I thought was really cool uh, so obviously on my model I decided to model that so what I did was I uh, cut out the old stock door on the model and I installed a Canon Co door and I painted it to match obviously and then weathered it and so forth and installed it so that looks really sweet 
Uh, it's just uh, another really cool detail to add on that. On the nose here, I patched out the old MPI logo, obviously. I added the, uh, class, or the uh, class light plate covers, weathered it up real good. I added all the front end details, minus the MU cables and the coupler bars, which are a nice detail on the Atherin units. I got the snow plow on there. I added the new ditch lights, the MU stands, the air hoses, and then the drop step, which is, looks uh, pretty cool. You can see all the nice weathering on the front there, too. On the walkways, all that came out really good. You got all this uh, uh, scratch paint, all the paint splatter and all that on the nose, just like the prototype, which looks really awesome. And then as we move the side, down the sides, you can see it's just a really nice, grimy, beat-up old locomotive. You got tons of rust streaking on the trucks, on the battery box doors, all kinds of paint chipping effects I did on this. Uh, it all came out really good. You can see I darkened the grills, obviously, weathered those up real nice. Did the HLCX patching, just like on the prototype. Got all the extra warning labels, all kinds of replacement hatches. You got the new uh, handbrake wheel there. The grills are nicely weathered on this side. And then as we look at the top real quick, you can see we got the replacement fans, the mismatched fans. And then you got all these nice paint chipping effects, which I did, which all came out really nice. And you got all the nice weathering on the roof there as well. You see how it all came out really good. Back down to the sill here, you can see the, grill, the, the sills are nicely uh, grimed up. And you even got a little bit of oil and fluid leakage out of this cabinet door here which looks really sweet I did that with some oil stains but uh, the trucks in particular I'm, I really like how they came out because I did a lot of weathering with them obviously I did my acrylic work for, first and then did all the chalk pestles all the powder weathering was done uh, afterwards so that all came out really good got all the appropriate fuel tank detailing you got a brand new waste retention tank mounted on there uh, for these modern units as you can see so that looks pretty cool uh, one thing you don't see in the photos of the HLCX 9009 is the unit does not have the safety stripes yet because this was earlier in 2006 so they weren't installed yet but on my road since I had this as a modern lease unit I decided to go ahead and add those so I just simply added the stripes to the sills and the ends there on the uh, walkways and then uh, I even added two up here on this little, uh, what would it be, a little, this little access panel here uh, for the clean air room. Uh, sometimes, in a lot of pictures I've seen of these units, uh, some, they, for some reason they put safety stripes, one or two safety stripes on these panels. Now, I'm not sure why, but they do. So I went ahead and added that, which I thought, I think it looks pretty, actually kind of unique. I think it looks kind of cool. As we get to the ends here, you can see... We have all the added details, the MU receptacle, the MU jumper cable, the, uh, what do you call that, the little uh, MU receptacle there, got the knuckle brackets, the airlines, all that's added. And then you can see the knockout, or the classification light covers, got the replacement number board just like the prototype, all kinds of nice weathering effects on the ends here as well. All came out really nice, I'm very happy with how that turned out. And then as we move to this side, you've got just about the same. There's another shot of that nice open cab door which looks pretty badass. Very nice. And all the details added, all the rust streaking, all that. Very nice weathering on this guy. But I'm very happy with how it turned out. I really really like it. I think it looks really cool. And then on this, on this part here you can see there's a lot of uh, streaking coming down uh, from these hood doors again uh, from some fluid leakage whatever it is I think I think it's like coolant or something that leaks down the sides of these uh, it's not a fluid flush but it's just sometimes a, an accumulation of fluid builds up in the sill here inside these doors and it'll, it'll sometimes spill out uh, spill out of these doors and kind of leak down the side of the fuel tank down the side of the sill on the air tank here as well so I kind of did that again with some oil uh, some oil stains so that came out pretty good again there's these uh, here's the side frames on this side and they came out pretty good I'm very happy with them. Uh, like I said, this will definitely be, uh, these exposed bearing caps will definitely be something I'll start doing on any other modern lease units uh, that I get uh, that were on CSX that have these. I'm going to try to do this detail for any other new units that I make. Uh, so that includes any CSX units. I might even go back and add these uh, exposed bearing caps to a few other locomotives that I know have them that I didn't do in the past. So that'll be another project that I'll do later on. But uh, yeah, overall there's HLCX 9009. Like I said, I'm very happy with how it turned out. I think the locomotive overall looks absolutely awesome. I'm very happy with it. And this will be another one of those engines, like I said, that'll be going in and we'll be getting uh, the DCC installation so it'll be able to run with all my other engines. You know, it'll be able to be speed matched. It'll be home freight on my railroad. So there's HLCX 9009 guys, I hope you think it looks cool, I really do think it looks cool myself, 
very proud of it, very happy. Overall a very, very, very nice unit. Alright, so there's my uh, lease units today, guys. I'm glad I got these finished up, and I think they both look really nice. So, like I said, all I gotta do at this point is add the DCC to them, and they'll be ready to go. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this little video here. I'll be sure to have more locomotive products uh, projects in the works, uh, so stay tuned for that. Of course, uh, keep you guys updated on any rolling stock projects I do, uh, anything along those lines. So if you like what you see, guys, you can subscribe, uh, comment if you'd like. Uh, be sure to check me out on Facebook. Dan's Custom Trains is my Facebook group page, and you can look me up as well, Daniel Arnold. You can friend me or whatever. That's fine. Uh, but uh, yeah, like, be sure, like I said, uh, be sure to check out my Facebook page. Uh, you guys can check out some nice detailed photos of some of the work that I've done there uh, if you'd like. So, like I said, stay tuned for more videos, guys. Thanks for watching, as always, and take care.